Hey guys, welcome to ceiling fan display, I think eight or nine. It's been since National Ceiling Fan Day since I filmed the display and uh, not too much has changed on it, but I've added a few fans since then and I feel like it's different enough now where I could film it. Plus, this is going to be uh, the last time you see the fan display. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm going to be changing up the layout a little bit so that some bigger fans can fit better together. And uh, yeah, so that'll be a good time. But for now, let's, uh, let's get started, shall we? So over here, I have the Minka Air Space Saver. Got to start on low. I still have it on this junk wall control, so it's not going to be uh, great. Speed selection won't be great. I only have like low and high on it. I picked up this fan, I think at a restore. I'm not entirely sure. Or I may have gotten it on a... Uh... Online, maybe. I'm not sure. But yeah, it's a very cute little fan, and one I've wanted for a while, and it's a very good little fan, too. Jeez, it's picking up speed fast. Yeah. Sometimes the low is slower than that, but uh, today it's, it wants to stay on medium. Bay Matari 1. This has been up here for a long time now. This one's kind of one of those permanent installs, because the light above the freezer is great to have. That's a fun noise. Yeah, if I find another tiny fan, that may be getting replaced, so, because that's annoying. Yeah, I, thought, I bought this as a pair of fans from a lady who owned a salon. I guess either she went out of business or something, I'm not entirely sure. Or maybe she just wanted different fans. But yeah, I got them both as a pair, and this one had better bearings of the two, so I used this one over the spot. Uh, the next one I have here is the Montgomery Ward Spinner. Put that on low. I have it on the Hunter 3-speed control. The speeds are pretty much the same as it would be on the pull chain, which is kind of cool. So I'm just using it off the speed control. I think it's a touch faster on the control, though, if anything. Yeah, I got this one new in box. This was a fan I've wanted for quite a while. This is one of those fans I bought out of curiosity. Uh, mainly because I had no idea what this was. When I say I wanted it for a while, I wanted it for at least two months, which, which is about when I saw this fan. <laughs> so, yeah, my brain's all over the place today. So here for the pair of industrials, we have the Banville Orange Line and then the Palco made Banville Silver Line. I'm going to see the, I think this is the lowest speed which they'll both start. Perfect. The Orange Line is very picky. The bearings are crap on it. <laughs> So yeah, this, they, since they share a control, this is how this is the speed they'll be at. The Palco is significantly faster than the Orange Line too. It's a little nicer out. It's about forty degrees today. Still cold in here though. So I apologize if I start shivering in the video. <laughs> so I got the Orange Line new in box. And I bought the silver line used. I also I also got that as a pair of fans. We Fire owns the other one. Got them from a guy who owned a storage facility. Not sure where these came out of, but uh, yeah. Those two silver lines are pretty much identical. His is no different from mine. All right, let's go over this way today have all the light kits on. It's in the middle of the day, that way I didn't have to have the mercury vapor lights on, so you could see them a little better. Oops, sorry, wrong chain. This is the uh, new tone hug the ceiling, the 42 inch one, with the extremely long pull chain <laughs> for the light. Had this one a while now, this was a gift from Weave Fire. He got, a, he got a two or three of them from a house. I had to get some extra screws for this fan, it was missing a few, but I got it put together and uh, it's a great little hugger. It's in great shape. Runs silently. I've had this for a while because, on the display anyway, because I really need a hugger for this spot to clear the industrials. And I don't have another one I can show off yet. So that's why this is still hanging. Here is one of the smallest fans. This is the Harbor Breeze Gaskin 24-inch fan. Bought this fan brand new from Lowe's. Really, I uh, wanted one of these for quite a while. It was in their clearance because I think they're, uh, I think it's like online only now to get the household one. 
because they sell this as like a, what is it, porch fan now? It has a clip on the top instead of the uh, typical ceiling fan mounting hardware. And it's been weatherproofed and it's like tripled the price of it. So, <laughs> yeah. I'll stick with the household one. Thank you. Here is one of the prettiest fans on my display, the Hunter Original. Uh, what year was this one from? 1992. That's what year. <laughs> this is a 1992 Hunter Original. Um, where did I get this one? I think I got this one on Marketplace again. Um, yeah. It didn't come with a canopy, and the wires were very long, and I was kind of lazy. I was too excited to hang the fans. <laughs> I've been having trouble getting Hunter Originals. But I finally have a few of them, and after this video, this will be replaced with another original I'll show off. This one is probably my favorite of the four I own. But yeah, it runs perfectly. Has plenty of oil in it, of course, because it's old-fashioned style fan. <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely in contention for one of the strongest fans on my display. Have the uh, Madison Avenue Dalmatian fan. I just recently filmed this one. This one I got on the uh, that app uh, offer up. There's never anything good on it, but when there is, you usually get a good deal on it, like this one. Got it for pretty much nothing, <laughs> including shipping. So that was a serious deal. Yeah, this was one of the three Madison Avenue made fans where they were all like kids theme fans. Um, all three of them are on my display right now, as you probably saw. This one happens to be the Dalmatian one. Runs uh, pretty well, too. I had everything running beforehand. That way, spin downs are a little better. But some of these fans haven't actually moved in months, so it'll take well over a day to film or to let them warm up. And uh, frankly, I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> So yeah, here's the air cool top mount fan you guys have recently seen. This is my second fan of 2024. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's one I've been wanting for quite a while, just a cheaper style top mount. Because for the longest time, I've only had that Lasco top mount, which uh, hopefully will make a comeback in the future. I need to get mounting hardware for it though. Yeah, this one runs great and is honestly it, the only problem it had was the reverse switch was kind of crapping out on it. I bought some brake clean, though, and sprayed the contacts on the reverse switch. Works perfectly. But, uh, yeah. I think this also could be a universal now. I've had a lot of people telling me what it could be. And the general consensus is that if it's not an air cool, it's probably a universal. i got to step back for this next one. The Encon High Breeze, or as everyone knows it, the... Crompton Greaves, 48-ish inch ceiling fan, or 1,050 millimeters, if you use the international system, that's probably not what it's called, <laughs> I'm American, I know inches and miles, sorry, I wanted to bring this one back, because I had it up on my display, but not for a long time, and I feel like that was kind of a, I feel like this thing was criminally underused, <laughs> Oh, yeah, I also got that Universal off Marketplace. This Crompton Greaves I got off Marketplace as well. This also came as a pair of fans. The second one is in Wii Fire's possession. These were used in a barn. I think it was some kind of horse barn or something like that. It was a huge barn. And uh, these were the only two fans they had, and I think they were used in a hayloft or something like that. So, uh, yeah, they, are in, they were in surprisingly good shape. Well... We Fires has a bend in the blade. But yeah, they just need a little cleaning from the cobwebs on them, and they were good to go. And man, this thing, whew, this is a rocket. This is definitely the most powerful fan on my display. All right, let's go over to this side now. Start with this little guy here. The uh, Encon, oh, I'm drawing a blank, Crusader. This looks like Encon's knockoff of the Hampton Bay Minuet, 
Or who knows, it could have been vice versa. Maybe the minuet came out after this Encon, but this is shockingly similar to a minuet. Runs very well. It was brand new in the box. This was a lucky eBay find, because usually you don't find cheap fans on eBay. This one was. I blame the fact it was brass, and the homeowners probably don't like brass fans. Then here's its uh, sister, an Encon 30-inch princess. Kind of a rare Encon by the looks of it. I got this one new in box as well. I've wanted this fan ever since I met Wee Fire and watched his video of his. I just absolutely love this fan, and I'd put it in my bedroom if not for the fact it's a noisy end gone. <laughs> oh, Minka air is driving me nuts. Yeah, the Minka has a nasty wobble, and the screws are very tight on all both it and the back box, so it's wobbling pretty badly still. I'm going to have to fix that or take it down after this. All right, moving over here, we have the uh, Madison Avenue Flintstone fan. Pull chain's a little stiff because of the silly little rock uh, piece they put on the bottom here. So you got to give it a good tug to get it to work right. This has pretty much the same motor air movement and blades as the other two Madison Avenue fans, except this one doesn't have any cool designs on it. It's plain white on both sides. But yeah, of course, named after one of the most famous Hanna-Barbera cartoons of all time, the Flintstones. You can see all the characters on it. I loved that show as a kid. An older show, but definitely a good show. And if you're interested, no light on this one. This one serves as the reverse switch. All right, next up we have uh, the uh, Homestead Universal. This is a 30-inch fan. This was a Marketplace find. Most of my fans I get off Marketplace. Definitely the best spot to find fans for me anyway. Um, I've always wanted a little Homestead, and I got two to my name. I have that 38-inch one, and then I have this little guy. This one runs like a top. It's perfect. Bearings are great on the fan. The only problem is the motor is quite noisy, <laughs> so I couldn't have it in my bedroom for very long. But it makes a great display piece. All right, this is the one I just recently filmed a few days ago. This is the Hunter Fantasy Flyer. Talked about in depth about this one. But kind of to summarize, this fan was a pain in the butt to install because of the design. But once you get it installed, it, it's probably it's very worth it because this is probably the most powerful hugger type fan I've ever felt. Right up there with like the Four Seasons, the Casablanca Four Seasons, and if not more powerful than that Casa. I would need to feel the Casa again though. But uh, yeah, this is a very cool kids fan. I think I said it was from 2008 or 2009. That was a find at a flea market. This is another Marketplace fan. This is a Moss HF100 series. Big ol' heavy fan. This one I actually got for free. The uh, guy I bought it from said he felt like doing a good deed for the day, and he let, pretty much let me have it. So it was very nice of him to do that. He said this fan was used in their bedroom for the longest time, but his wife was tired of it and wanted something newer. So, uh, yeah, who knows what it was replaced with, but uh, this would definitely be a good bedroom fan. This runs silently and has some good speed selections. <laughs> I kind of wished it was a Moss Heirloom, but the HF100 is pretty much just a cheaper version of it. Uh, it's not too, too different. Over here is another fan that's been up for quite a while. The uh, Heritage Alliance Rainbow fan. This is a fan that probably won't come down anytime soon. I just like this one too much to take down. This is one of two Rainbow Huggers I own. The other one is the uh, Walmart version, the Home Essentials at the time. That's what it was known as at the time. Runs great, of course. And it's always fun watching the yellow blade because it sticks out so much more than the other five. <laughs> Here's its uh, twin, the brass one, the another Heritage Alliance. This one's probably going to come down next, though, because this one is not running well. 
The speeds are fine. It's mostly just the uh, knocking noise I'm getting from the motor. The wires are out of the way. The I think it's just the bearings. They're just kind of loose inside of the motor. Rather unfortunate, but uh, yeah. I'll probably have something else to put up here soon, too. I just have to make sure I have the clearance for it. Also, as you can see, the rainbow fan is significantly faster. I think the capacitor in this one is failing, too. <laughs> That's why I took down the White Heritage Alliance, because the cap in that one was bad. After I had filmed it, the low st really started to go. It was very low speed, like fast go low. <laughs> Looks like this one's not too far behind. Which is kind of, which really just is a testament to the quality of these fans, because I had got all three of them new in box, and one out of three is running well after about a year or so. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> they are definitely cheap fans. This, however, is the opposite of cheap. This one's probably the most expensive on my display. This is the Hunter 1886 series fan. The design is based off the turk branded fan from the year 1886 or like i think that was the year this is pretty much a faithful recreation or tribute i think that's a more appropriate word for it a tribute to that fan the whole motor housing spins it's an elaborate brass design this is a limited edition model too so this would have had the wooden crate sadly i couldn't get that the owner didn't keep it but i got the fan at least and I forget which year this one's from. But yeah, I say expensive because this is the most I've paid for a fan <laughs> on Marketplace anyway. And the fan itself is like, good grief. I see listings for this two, three, four, even $500. But yeah, it runs great and it's a very beautiful fan. I've wanted one of these a long time. I put it in my house if my, uh, if my mom liked it. <laughs> when it comes to interior design, whoops, when it comes to interior design, she's the queen. Here's another Hunter that's been on my display a long time now. Got this off Marketplace as well. This is the Hunter original second century version. I think it's from 93. I'm not sure though. I'd have to look at the top again. It's uh, pretty much just a redesigned version of that original back there. They're about the same age, too. This one was brand new. No box, though. So there was a little corrosion on the screws from sitting out in the open for so long. But the bearings on it are surprisingly good. I don't know if that's supposed to be the low speed for this fan, though. It may just be a, the cap is a little weak after all these years. But, uh, yeah. Still runs great, though. And it's a very powerful fan, of course. Just as good as the original. Over here, we have the uh, Hampton Bay Great and One. This is the last time you'll be seeing this one on camera. Um, I've had this one up for a very long time now, and just only because I've been too lazy to replace it. I do like these Great and Ones. Oh my goodness, gravy. <laughs> Uh, I might have to do some little preventative maintenance here. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Feels tight. Okay. Well, if that's an example of why I should take it down. <laughs> okay. The uh, globe is pretty noisy on the fan. But uh, it's a Hampton Bay, cheap Hampton Bay, so that's kind of what you expect with these things. I got this fan new in box off Marketplace. Lady said she bought it new like 25, almost 30 years ago now and never used it. So, uh, yeah, that's the story with this little guy. The fan I've coveted the most for the longest time, the uh, K55 Emerson Heat Fan, colloquially known to collectors as the Blender Fan. Still looks nothing like a blender in my mind. <laughs> this is too speed because it's so old. And, uh, yeah, runs great. This one came from Wii Fire. This was his gift to me. We traded a bunch of things, and this is one of the things he traded. Runs great. He said he got it from a dumpster. That uh, and, uh, Apparently, this may have came out of a barn because it was covered in hay and straw, whatever that stuff is. But after a good cleaning, it worked great. And he, uh, It didn't come with any mounting hardware, so he converted it to a ball and socket, which is fine because the fan's not that heavy. 
But uh, yeah, you saved this poor thing from a terrible fate. All right, I'm not gonna forget this fan this time. <laughs> Last time a few of you were upset by that. <laughs> so sorry about that. This is the Encon Petite. Um, where'd I get this one? I can't remember where I got this fan. I, I wanna say Marketplace or maybe the ReStore, but I'm not sure. Every now and then my habitat coughs up something good. This was not one of those fans, but it's still pretty cool to have. I bought this mostly because I always had the Heritage Huggers and I really wanted the actual Encon one. You can kind of see the differences. The housing is a little taller on this one versus the Heritage fans. This one looks a little chubbier too. And uh, it runs better than the other two. I think it was actually better made in my opinion. Here's the third and final Madison Avenue fan, the Mickey Mouse fan. In terms of being the rarest, I don't know. I think that's tied with the Dalmatian fan. But uh, it's definitely cool. Definitely one of the coolest fans on my display. I guess I have... I guess my theme was kids fans, because I have five of them hanging right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this one runs great. Got this one new in box, and it's been so long since I've had it. Here's the box, in fact, that I forgot where I got it from. I see a shipping label on it, so who knows? Maybe I got it online from, like, eBay or OfferUp. Who knows? Maybe Marketplace, now that I think about it. But, yeah, I own this fan for about two and a half years, and I only hung it last month. So, yeah. But it runs great, though, regardless. I think it runs a little faster than the Dalmatian fan. I gotta be honest. I could be mistaken, they're very similar, but yeah. The bearings on this one are nice and loose too, so it has a much longer spin down than the other two. All right, here is another fan that's been up for a very long time. I dare say too long, Minka Air Supra. I got this one new in box. This one I bought out of curiosity because I wanted to see how good these 32 inch Minkas are. I was not disappointed, this is an awesome fan. This particular one though, could be better because there's a knocking on high speed inside the motor somewhere. I'm not sure what it is, but it's kind of unfortunate that it has that, because this would be in my house for a while if I could, but uh, I couldn't sleep with a knocking noise like that. Um, not much else to say about it. <laughs> it exists. <No. laughs> Definitely one of my favorite fans on display, right up there with the blender fan the 42 inch charleston <laughs> you've seen it you know it you love it this one's not coming down anytime soon i just love seeing this one too much has a nice low speed too it will stall out every now and then if it's freezing cold out here so this is a fan I, this is one of those fans that hasn't run in months so low speed's a little slower than it should be but it's still a very nice aesthetic low and I just remembered I already forgot a fan, the Caribbean Breeze, but I have to go to the other side to get the control. So I'll get to that in a minute. I guess I'm saving best for last. The little uh, Adamberg Renessa. I can't find the remote for this fan. I don't know where it went. Like, it's just, I set it down somewhere and I haven't found it since. So that's, that's aggravating. So this will only be on high. But it's all right. It's kind of an annoying fan on high. It's very, very loud. Uh, yeah, I can't find it. it. Has a cool light in the middle. I I filmed this one a few times before. I have my other Indian fan, the Bajaj Maxima. I was planning to actually hang it up with this fan or in place of it. I'm kind of debating. I just got to find a speed control rated it for 220 volts. That way I can actually have speed selectable on this little guy. But uh, yeah, I'll turn that off for now. Spin down on this fan is incredibly quick. But uh, yeah, I just haven't had the time or care to remove this fan, but I might, after reading about some of the problems these had with their receivers, Apparently a lot of customers are upset because the receivers and these fans tend to uh, give out too early. So the quality could leave much to be desired on it by the sounds of it. 
I haven't had a problem with mine. I don't use it very much, if at all. But yeah, I haven't had too many problems with mine. I put the remote over here. It's really driving me nuts, guys. I want to know where it went. Mm, well, whatever. <laughs> All right, and now, last but not least, the fan that's been hanging the longest, and, that, and the fan that will keep that record, the Moss Caribbean Breeze. This came from possibly the most well-known collector now, <laughs> Skylar Strickland. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, this is a very cool fan. This one was labeled as an ocean breeze. The, I put the sticker on the wall control just because I liked it. And it covered up that logo on the top, which says Sunlight. So I'm guessing it was rebranded by Sunlight and then re-rebranded by Ocean Breeze. But originally, these were made by Moss, I think. I could be getting that wrong. But yeah. It's pretty much like a uh, newer Emerson Heat Fan Industrial. Similar blades. Motor is similar in design, except the Moss, it's much fatter. And compared to my 36, uh, my 48-inch heat fan, this one is definitely the more powerful of the two. Not much, but it is. But uh, yeah, that's everything on low, so I'll give you guys a good shot of that. This never gets old. <laughs> yeah, lowest low speed goes to the Fasco. And then the second century. Yeah, this is always exciting because nine out of ten of these fans never get used. So <laughs> the only ones that I ever leave like plugged in would be the industrials and these two little guys. And uh the Flintstone fan. But other than that, the rest of these just kind of sit here without being used, just because my wiring is not exactly the safest. They're all, it's done right. It's just, uh, I don't, I'm just paranoid and don't want anything to happen. Yeah, fastest low speed, without a doubt, the Harbor Breeze. The little Gaskin, that's very fast on low. Alrighty then. Let's crank them up to medium, shall we? This one's just gonna go straight to high since there is no medium on the fan, thanks to the crappy wall control. Oh, it's smoothed out now. How about that? Huh. I guess it's probably better if it's flushed to a ceiling on a back box. That way it doesn't wobble as freely. All right, medium is kind of here-ish. Montgomery Ward. I'm going to take a sip while that goes up. Orange line isn't changing that much. It doesn't like this control. It really needs its own control. In the future, I may wire separate controls for these. Oh, that's interesting. I never noticed these blemishes here on the motor. Hmm. Weird. Maybe it's corrosion. Who knows? I may have to save that fan. <laughs> Medium. Yeah, speed selection on this fan is terrible. You can visibly see it speed up, but yeah, it's not a drastic difference. All right, let's move this to speed number three. Have to keep in mind which fan, which fan is on what speed. <laughs> That way I don't miss one again. Move this to two and we'll put it on medium high. All right. Yeah, that Palco is liking that medium speed a lot more than the orange line is. medium-ish on the Crompton Greaves. 
This is actually using the can arm control. I can't find the blades of my can arm too, so I can't hang that one for now. These MCONs have great speed selections. I'm pretty impressed at the two of them. Air movement is like the same from these two fans. They're pretty much the same. I mean, this one is better because it has a down rod. This one was missing its down rod. Flintstone fan has some pretty bad bearings. They're very stiff. I've had it running a long time, but over the past year I've had the fan. It's uh, not really freeing up that well. Kind of hard to reach some of these because right now my garage is serving as winter storage for our, me and my family's motorcycles. <laughs> so I'm kind of having to reach over them right now. <laughs> my personal bike is right here. <laughs> yeah, this one has pretty slow speed, so it's not that drastic, but it makes up for it with how powerful it is. Man, that is a drastic difference. I never really noticed it until I started filming. I gotta be honest. <laughs> okay, that was on low. I thought I left it on medium or something. I guess this thing's cap is going bad. I'll have to capitalize on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Keep kicking, kicking this loose bottle around. It's kind of annoying. There we go. <laughs> when the breeze gets strong, it, they all overpower the second century, so it will start going backwards even though it's on low. It's kind of a little problem it has. But it's only because of the placement. It's like right in the center of everything. All right, globe. Last one more video. didn't really change that much did it <laughs> this is just two speed so i'll just go to high i'll save that for after medium and that's everything no i'm just kidding <laughs> just kind of speeding through these now yeah, this section in particular is what I'm going to be reorganizing just because this is a little chaotic. So I'll be switching it out soon, hope reorganizing this area so that it fits a little nicer. And that is everything. Like I said, I'm not turning that on until high speed. Ugh. Yeah, it's at this speed where you start to feel the different breezes from the different fans and they start to fight each other. <laughs> I never you have more than six fans running at a time, and that's during the summer. I'll have maybe four fans running. Medium speeds, they're all pretty similar, actually. I'm kind of impressed. I don't know. Judge, I... Ah, that's wonderful. The breeze was so good it knocked over some blades to my Panama. That's good to know. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> Yeah, this, as you can see, I never do more than one take on a video. I always just kind of take a video and leave it as is. Oh, brother. That was that uh, polished or faded brass fan you guys saw or, uh, earlier in last year. Uh, the Panama. I actually have three of those. We Fire came by a bunch of them, and I happened to pick up a couple from my restore, so... Oh my gosh. You know what? Knock on wood. One of the fans is probably going to fall now, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Oh, these are the... Okay. My word. Yeah. That's not even loose. That's, what? Oh, it's the screw, maybe? 
Ah, that was the screw. Yeah, that was tight when you feel it by hand. That's weird. Oh, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I'm not a professional filmer. I like to give you guys a good quality shot, but uh, yeah. Let's move that out of the way. There we go. <laughs> Last homeowner put a custom tassel on this thing. I kind of like it. It kind of, weirdly it fits, I think it weirdly fits the fan. Okay. Hopefully if all the hangups are over now. Let's get these, let's get all these beasts on high, shall we? I'm going to start over here first. Yeah, I never use all of them on high. <laughs> so that's exclusively for videos. That way, so spin those easier. Okay. Still one of the fastest fans I've ever had. This thing is cold. <laughs> it's cold to stand under this original in 40 degree weather. I can't feel anything from this new tone. The breeze is just being thrown and sucked everywhere. <laughs> Do that one quickly. Yeah, that was like no different, as you can see. Medium is pretty much high on this little Gaskin. All right. You can really hear the Montgomery Ward now. Industrials. This is when the orange line really starts to show it's a Banville. See how much faster that gets? <laughs> yeah, I don't like how close the Palco is to the Montgomery Ward. Oh golly, it's all over the place. <laughs> Not even half the fans are on high yet, but yeah. Like I said, I only do this for the videos. All right, Crom degrees. Now it's really gonna start getting cold in here. Yeah, this moves the high speed almost instantly. It's pretty much the most powerful fan hanging here. This air cool almost seems slow, slow compared to the rest of the fan that's around. <laughs> All right, little, little end cons. Not too drastic a change, but uh, definitely faster. Okay, I gotta get away from this end con. <laughs> yeah, this fan has a terrible breeze, the Flintstone fan. The uh, other two fans are definitely better air movers. Not much though, this is, all three of them have pretty, ter have pretty terrible uh, air movement. Moss has a little wobble on high, but it is hanging on a little peg versus traditional mounting hardware. Heritages. Wow, yeah, the rainbow fan is way faster than the brass one. You can probably hear it too. Versus. It's not that drastic on high. That's kind of weird. This is really boogieing on high. <laughs> it's almost as fast. Oh, well. Once again, lending to the quality of the fan. <laughs> wow, even this has a little wobble. Yeah, the breeze is pretty intense. I'm getting gusts of wind from every direction now. I think the 1886 hangs as low as the industrial fans. Second century. Yeah, <laughs> this fan is really gonna wiggle because of where its placement is. All right, the most problematic fan on the display as of this video. <laughs> yeah, on high, I'll, I won't be surprised if you hear the globe buzzing again. Blender fan.
yeah, it's not a K63. The K55s are a little slower. Oh, it has a wobble to it. I didn't think the fan was light enough for that. <laughs> Charleston. Speaking of globe rattle, this still has its, because the light kit just doesn't sit right on it. It's a little wobbly. But uh, yeah, I'll turn on this little beast. Turn on the Minka Air. Yeah, for air movement, this is the most this is the most efficient, but it's also the loudest. It feels like a box fan. And last but not least. Yeah, this is this has better air movement than the other two 30 inch huggers, but uh, I can't feel it at all thanks to these guys around it. <laughs> goodness <laughs> the wind noise from the 28 fans hanging or 27 it is monumental <laughs> that's everything running on high it's always a little scary because that's so many moving blades all within inches of each other but that's what makes this so cool right <laughs> Yeah, I think the orange line and the crop degrees are fighting right now because I'm getting weird gusts of wind from the both of them. But uh, the whole, my whole garage is freezing cold now. <laughs> oh, I forgot a fan. <laughs> I'm always gonna do this, I'm sorry guys. There we go. Had to forget the very pretty little homestead. And that is everything else. <laughs> Yikes. I had a long week of work. Sorry, guys. <laughs> now that's everything on high. <laughs> yeah, like I said, the wind noise is amazing in here. Fan, you can see actually some of the fans started to wobble just from each other. So the big ones in would be the Montgomery Ward, the Silver Line, the original second century Dalmatian fan. Most shaky fan? I was gonna say the Minka, but now it's smoothed out. That's weird. Probably would have to go to, I don't know, the AT86 is all over the place. Probably the Graydon one. All right. Now for the giant spin down, switching to wide angle. Here we go, three, two, one. <sighs> okay, this is always really hard to do. <laughs> okay, so the first fan is always the Indian fan. Yep, <laughs> very, very fast spin down. Next is the Harbor Breeze. Uh, and that's about when I don't know. <laughs> It's, it's been cold, so... Oh, wow, the Charleston. That's never usually that slow. It's been cold, so spin downs are affected. Case in point, the Charleston already stopped. Little Minka. Uh, Princess. Brass Heritage. Uh, I think the Petit. Yeah, Encon Petit. Oh, the Matari. Um... Airplane fan, fantasy flyer, that's what it's called. <laughs> Homestead. Crusader. Rainbow fan, I think, somewhere in there. And the Flintstone fan. Uh, Montgomery Ward. Something else stop? I think I'm missing something. Ah, Dalmatian fan. Oh, orange line somewhere in there, too. Yeah, the bearings on that orange line are terrible. Crompton Greaves, Second Century, 1886. Pretty much just collectible stuff, and then the Grayton. <laughs> That's a pretty collectible fan. The Grayton, too, was a little more popular. All right, uh, Grayton. Wow, the air cool is still going. Moss is still going. Emerson, Silverline. 
Oh, Dalmatian fan. I think I called that already. I'm not sure. Universal. Oh, pretty much tied with the Mickey fan there. Also after these two over here. The original stopped after those two. And then the Silver Line. I want to say it's going to be the Moss, the Silver Line, and then the Emerson. That Emerson has a really long spin down. Oh, it's close. Can I get all three in shot? Nah. I'll hold it so you can see these two. And... Moss has stopped... Yep, looks like it's going to be the Silver Line, and then the Heat Fan. Yep. And the Blender Fan is the winner for Spin Down. Wow, it's still going. <laughs> the cold does not affect the Blender Fan, I will say that. It performs flawlessly regardless of the weather. Really just a testament to the quality of such a fan. Also, I'm fairly certain it's the oldest fan on my display. Most of these are like mid-80s and early 90s. That one, I believe, is early 70s or mid-70s. The Crompton Cruise is dated 1980. Or, sorry, I don't know what this one's dated. The Moss Caribbean Breeze. Okay, so we'll do zero to high, and we will wrap this video up. So we'll start with this section first. Um, here we go. This is kind of hard to do. Oh. Oh, yeah, they're on the other switch. Never mind. I guess it's just those three. <laughs> Number two. This is most of the fans. Hmm. I've been having troubles with the cord I wired into the industrial, so I think it's having issues again. I'm going to have to switch it out. Oh, yep, there we go. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, this, this video has just been full of mishaps, hasn't it? And then the last set. My goodness. Scary noise when you hear those industrials fire up. Well, there you have it. That would conclude my ceiling fan display video. Like I said, in the future, I'll have some more fans changed out and I'll have the layout changed a little bit so I can fit some of the stuff better together. Because I've just kind of been lazy with it, but I'm gonna fix that in the future. So it's going to be a long time before I film another one. But anyway, there you guys have it. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.